Okay, Ducky Artichoke, welcome, welcome. Physics lesson 9.1 Electrical Potential and Charges. Alright, so first thing we want to go through is how uh, a couple methods of charging. So, first one, um, we have conduction. Uh, conduction works very similar to uh, how it does in thermal energy. Whenever we have a charge object, so something with a positive or negative charge, um, come in contact with a neutral object, which has the charges evenly distributed, what we'll have is the neutral object will take on the same net charge as the object. So negative, negative, positive, positive. Uh, the second type that we can look at is something known as induction. This one's a little bit trickier, um, but still pretty straightforward. Uh, so we still have a charged object. We still have a neutral object. Uh, the difference here is that neutral object has some kind of ground. Uh, person, uh, metal object, uh, something that's grounding it. Um, a third party comes in. That's what that uh, grounding is going to involve. Like I said, it can be a person or the ground, uh, metal, anything like that. Uh, that way it gives the electrons a place to go. Then, when that neutral object will take on the opposite charge when the charged object is near it. So if it's the charged object is positive, it'll take on a negative charge. If the charged object is negative, it'll take on a positive charge. And it will, will do that once that charged object comes into the area. All right, uh, other things that we can deal with. Uh, the interaction between charged objects. So when we have a positive and negative charge, we have an attraction. Opposites attract, likes repel. Uh, and this exerts a force. There's an acceleration either to pull them close or to separate them, and that is dependent on their distance. So in this diagram, what we have is R is our distance. This is our force. If it's negative, we attract. If it's positive, we repel. And we'll go through the formula and why that is in a little bit. Uh, and then finally, we have these Qs, Q1, Q2. Um, and that's just our charge. Formula-wise, uh, we have Coulomb's law, which indicates that force is related to the charges and the distance between them. So uh, force, K, that is our constant, 9 times 10 to the 9th, or technically 8.98 times 10 to the 9th. Uh, that is always going to be placed in for K. So always there, doesn't change. Uh, Qs, these are the charge of our two different objects. We're only going to deal with two, not three, so we'll just deal with that. Uh, it doesn't really matter what order you put them in. Five times one is the same as one times five. So yay, math, order of operations. Distance is squared. So that's important to remember uh, because as our distance goes down, the force should go up by the square of whatever it went down by. So if it goes, gets cut in half, then the force goes up by 4. Uh, if the distance gets greater, then it would go down by the fraction, you know, the opposite fraction. So just divide it by 4. Uh, oops. All right, so let's say we have two spheres. Sphere, sphere. They are four centimeters apart. Like so. Um, sphere A has a charge of six times ten to the negative six. That's coulombs. And sphere B has one of three times ten to the negative six coulombs. I want to know the force. So 
So what we're going to go ahead and do is first convert 4 centimeters into meters. Remember, it has to be in meters. So our force should equal K. 9 times 10 to the 9th. Charge number 1, 6 times 10 to the negative 6. Charge number 2, 3 times 10 to the negative 6. Divided by our distance, 0 0.04 meters squared. And you should end up with 101.25 newtons. That should be our force. Yes, tune in next time. Same physics place, same physics time with your same ultra awesome or lame, depending on your view, host. That's me. Okay. Time to go. Goodbye.